this I call the shots, I never call it quits Trust my intuition, bet it's right and bitch it often is Seen too many others come and go, they had the wrong intent Do it out of love and never for it, then I watch it get Bigger than expected, no second guess it, I let it set in It's God's plan, we out here only accepting blessings I'm stuck with it, this mindset is terminal In and out different terminals, leveling up is personal And I already made it, y'all can miss me Hard to believe I made something from nothing No hindsight discussions I've been writing, I love it Welcome to the 3 Gig Sports Podcast Where we are never wrong Just sometimes misinformed This is Danny G sitting alongside Rio and Jimmer today And holy shit, we just had ourselves a game, gentlemen uh, yeah. I, I don't know if you guys saw the end of that Cowboys Niners game But it was intense And the last non-play, I guess, of the game it's pretty controversial. So uh, if you yeah. missed that, you definitely want to check it out. But other than that, we've had some good games, a couple blowouts. It's been a good time so far, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bill's Busy. Mafia. <laughs> Bill's Mafia, Busy. baby. Busy weekend. Made oh, ourselves yeah. over to S&B Farms. Yes. Yeah. And Bancroft, Iowa. That was a good-ass experience right there. And some nice people. Some yeah. damn good-tasting lineup of whiskey. In oh, yeah. Yeah, they were great people. And yeah. I tell you what, we learned a lot about their distilling process that's unique versus what some other companies do. And yep. it explained, you know, why it kind of softens the bite and things like that. And what they yeah. and what they personally went through to make to try to get this to succeed too. Yeah, so. the story is amazing, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely shout out to those guys. Um <clears throat> if you don't know, that private first class we were drinking is amazing and they've got a whole selection. We threw it up on Facebook. They've got a, a lot of award winning uh, award winning, excuse me, mm-hmm. bourbons um, and things like that. So that Sir Winston Peach went down pretty damn smooth last night. Oh yeah, yes, it's so stuff. good. We put down most of that bottle last night. So yeah, well, we're just <laughs> sipping on it. Yeah, that was damn good. Yeah, and uh, what do you? Well, I try. I haven't tried the apple. Oh, we tried it there, but I didn't. We didn't try it last night. That was the intent, but that peach tastes so damn good. So yeah. Definitely. But it was a it was a cool ass experience either way. So, shout out to them. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and kick her off, Jimmy. What's going on? Uh, so the Nets expect Kevin Durant to miss four to six weeks with a sprained MCL. Yeah, it's tough. He got ran into it by his own player, a uh, guy that was on the ground. Mm. But uh, they just they just all three got back together, and you do realize well, they've kinda. played. <laughs> yeah, because he only plays in away games, right? Well, yeah, so. but they've only played like so. I was talking about like so many games together. They've been together for two seasons. They've played like I don't know, eighteen games together, some shit, right? And yeah, the, and then that happens. Yeah, it's tough. So KD's gonna be out for that long. Kyrie's only gonna play in half of the games in that span. So Harden's gonna have to. He's got a big lift, man. Trying to keep them rolling. Well, he's used to it, right? Rockets. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of what. Yep. He's uh, yeah, he's done it. it before by yeah. himself. So I got you. <clears throat> it's true. Uh, Djokovic leaves Australia, disappointed after court dismisses deportation appeal. Yeah, the whole thing was weird, and regardless of which way they went, they should have just made the decision, and either you're in or you're out, and stuck with it right away instead of flip flopping back and forth and back yeah. and forth. Um, so yeah. We talked about how it'd be a shame he wouldn't if he didn't get to participate, and he didn't. So, yeah, it's tough. He's won the last four there, I do believe. So that's a big reason he was really pushing it. Like mm-hmm. he just needs one more, right, to break the record. And sounds like that'd almost be a shoe in the way he plays there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I get why he was pushing it, but damn, it's tough not to have the reigning champ there to play. Yeah. His his doctor by the sounds of it maybe more pissed than even him. He's like, how in the hell can you kick a guy out for being unhealthy when he's a world class athlete? He's one of the healthiest people I know. But he's a health risk to your to your country. Yeah. So he went on like a soapbox about it. So yeah. I didn't see that. Damn. It's yeah. true though. Uh so <laughs> we as Lakers fans can accept being outplayed, but we deserve more than a lack of effort and no sense of urgency. Magic Johnson tweeted that to his 5.1 million followers. Owner Jeannie Buss, you deserve better. This followed their 37-point loss to the Nuggets. James didn't talk to the media afterwards. He kind of boot scooter rallied out, and it was Russell Westbrook, and the only thing he really had to say is, like, um, 
people are entitled to their opinion. He's not in the building. He doesn't see what, what what's going on and what we're working on and stuff like that. And but uh, I have no I have no opinion on his opinion or whatever, however he worded it. But man, when magic's calling you out though. Well, I mean, the the Lakers franchise is used to winning and mm-hmm. and not the struggle that they're going through right now. Um, you know, it's kind of a weird process. They could always they were like the Yankees, they could always buy a decent enough roster to be winning and be up there in the mm-hmm. top of the Western Conference. Well, they did that, but it's not panning out to wins. And um you know, it's not just buying the superstars anymore. It all has to fit together. The pieces all have to fit together. You know, no matter how many good players you have they don't yeah. gel together it's doing exactly what the lakers are doing right now they are under 500 and this is the furthest in an nba season since lebron's rookie season that his team was under 500 yep i saw that mm-hmm. Jeez. it's insane right and we looked at the rosters one time that cavaliers team that he took to the finals was Horrible, horrible! Oh my gosh! I didn't realize how bad it was till we looked at it one time. Right. I was like, "Oh my goodness!" It's like, "Good God!" Yeah, that, this roster is nothing like that. I don't care if yeah, these guys are no. fifty years old or not. That roster that he put on his back that he's talking about, that alluding to, is that was horrendous. Yeah, I don't know. I think it <clears throat> really shows that it's cool to have input from players to say like who I'd like to play with and things like that, who should come over. But LeBron has so much weight. And he wanted Westbrook, but that's not a smart decision. He, it just isn't. It's a terrible fit. It's not he's, even that it's a he's bad. He's not thing. a so you, absolutely. So he loves he loves his intensity and everything like that, and then he gives everything he has, which is awesome to play with, right? What he f- fails to notice, evidently, or forgets, is that Westbrook can't shoot. He's not a shooter. He's not a three point shooter. He's a, and that's what you need. LeBron needs that to succeed. He needs that. Around him, right? You, you, everywhere he's been, Ron has had the ball in his hands. Well, Russ needs the ball in his hands to do what he's going to do. To do him, yeah, exactly. absolutely. And, like, cause, and because he's not a shooter, exactly. He has so to have the ball, right? it was not a good fit from the start, and I, we seen it. Yeah, yeah, and they haven't been able to add anything. They they're so limited with cash flow because of those three guys that they just hodgepodge and hope something works, and it has looked like shit. Yeah, thirty. What was it? Thirty eight points. Like, come on. Are you kidding me? You, are you yeah. Sacramento now? Like, is that what's going on? Like, right. <laughs> damn. Right. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Taking low blows. Yeah. <laughs> so, needless to say, you guys agree with Magic. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, MRI shows no structural damage to the knee of uh, Bulls guard Zach Levine. Levine landed awkwardly grabbing a rebound Friday against the Warriors. It did look gross, but... Mm-hmm. The way they've been playing, Man, uh, yeah. that luckily that's it's nothing serious. So. Right, that little yep. core they end up bringing in has been balling out together. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of surprising, really. I mean, they do have the goat Caruso, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they've been playing dang well together. So to see that wonder, not have any significant damage is is good news. You know, the last few nights of watching basketball, and I have been and watch, been watching even more NBA recently. Uh, what the LA Lakers could have been. So we'll rewind a little bit to the previous one and combo it up with this. You do realize they had Julius Randle at one point who is the Knicks star, right? Yeah. Um, obviously well, had the ball brother. Is he the Knicks star? Or is he a stat stuffer? He's a Over star. There. He, they went to the playoffs with him. So that's not a stat stuffer to me. Not yeah. as much. So yes, so like when I'm talking like stat stuffers, the God, and his name's going to elude me now that we're talking about it, but there was always one guy that always stuck inside my head. They were like a, like a 20-win team. Kevin Love in Minnesota. That, yep, absolutely. That works. That that works perfectly. That wasn't the guy I was thinking of, but uh, he used to play for the Wizards. He averaged like 20 and 10 or 23 and 10. Every, every game was his stat line. Well, that works great when, you're, um, when your team is that bad. Mm-hmm. And you're just and you're the only flow that they have. I think it was a little bit different with Julius, but I could be wrong on that too. Some Pachulia? No, I can't remember. Oh uh, no, no, it was I can't remember his name. It was it's a big a, man. Yeah, ish. So he was maybe like uh, six nine, six ten, something like that. He was just purely a scorer, and he and the rebounds were purely because so many bad shots were going up. There was plenty of balls to be grabbed, you know. 
But the other one was obviously Lonzo Ball, and then Mar and then Ingram down there, and maybe what they could have been. And they already had Alex Caruso. Like what this team could have been. You're just struggling right now so bad, right? Yep. Maybe you should just. This is my point of sometimes you just stick with the core that you drafted and actually believe in them and coach them up instead of giving up on them so quick and using them as pieces. I mean, you'd be a fool not to try to go get LeBron. I get that, but. Yeah. Uh, Calvin Qatar shuts out. You're going to have to help me with his name. Giga Ch- Chickadaz. Yeah. I think we forgot to talk about that, but I was I took Qatar and won some money there. There you go. Uh, he beat him up pretty good. Yep. He wins in a unanimous decision, uh, UFC fight night, giving Giga his first loss in, U- in a UFC octagon. Mm-hmm. Uh, the victory came almost one year to the day after Qatar absorbed 445 total strikes in a devastating loss to former champ Max Holloway. Yeah, he got pieced up that <clears throat> that fight. So uh, good to see him back, back in the win column. Uh, another name fighting there at 45, 55. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, I almost did it again. All right. Uh, Steelers activate wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster uh, ahead of the Kansas City game. An injury that was thought to be season-ending. Smith-Schuster underwent shoulder surgery after the injury and has been sidelined for the past 14 weeks. He was designated to return from IR on Thursday and practice with the team Thursday and Friday. Play him 100 snaps. 100% of the snaps, right? Yep. If you need him. <laughs> and they will, right? Yeah. More than likely. I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, they have a lot of good, they, uh, not good, but decent young receivers they there. Do. I, this is going to be more if, like, uh, Big Ben could take a shoulder back like a couple years, a few years to me. It'd be nice. I mean, it's uh, Juju Smith Schuster is a great slot, a very good slot receiver. So it's huge. I mean, it, it is big for them to mm-hmm. have him back out there. And it's a little bit of motivation. Yeah. Uh, Najee cleared, so he'll be playing. Good. Yeah. I <clears throat> I'm really curious how this game's gonna go. I don't I don't think anybody's giving Pittsburgh a shot, but probably not, no. This guy is but. speaking of which. A better puts down two hundred and twenty thousand dollars on Pittsburgh Pittsburgh plus thirteen. Yeah. What's the return on that if they win? Why do you gotta do something silly like that? It's gonna be right around that, two hundred ten probably. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say what the payout would be, payout. but it usually Still. when you're when you're going on the spread, it's gonna be usually somewhere in the ballpark of uh, minus one ten up to somewhere minus one twenty. So. That would be – it's still like $200,000 is yeah. what they would. Yeah. Shoot, I think $5 just straight up was going to give me 35 or so. Yeah. So. Damn. Yeah. Two, some people. two hundred twenty grand. Jesus. Must be nice. Uh, here's one. Kirk Friends disbands diversity group and says decision is unrelated to the leader's suggestion to move on from the Iowa coach. The Gazette in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, reported that Ferenc's decision to end the committee came shortly after its leader, former offensive lineman David Porter, suggested it was time for Iowa to cut ties with its coach. The committee was created after the 2020 investigation into racial bias in the program. Yeah, no, Kirk did this. He's like, I just got a contract extension. I'm going to be here. I don't need anybody looking over my shoulder. You're out. It definitely seems that way. Yeah, (laughs) come on. Everybody can see that. Are you serious? What? Right. Uh, he evidently sent an email out before that to the whole committee saying it sounded nice. Before it became official, sure, but they were already yeah. talking. Yeah. You know, on his extension. So, yeah, he's, he's like, oh, okay, they, they're about to extend me. I'm going to go ahead and kick this dude out. <laughs> uh, the Buccaneers' defense swarms the Eagles in a 31-15 to victory. They had blanked them through the first three quarters. So that 15 is kind of not even, yeah. <laughs> not indicative of how that game actually went, and I'm and a lot of it wasn't on Brady. That defense was all over the place. They got healthy in the right time. Yeah, let's be real. They, they're a huge part of why they won the Super Bowl last year. Mm-hmm. Um, if they can keep this up, damn, got a yeah. little bit of that swag back from yeah. last year. And uh, they didn't miss a beat, man. Mike Evans turned into the target monster today. Mm-hmm. He what do you have? Ten targets, nine targets, something like that. Usually he doesn't get that, so. They've definitely adjusted. Holy shit. Did not expect that. We, I think we, when we were talking, we figured Philly would keep this yeah. close, right? Last yep. time. So, yeah. 
That's what I thought. I thought uh, they could keep it close. You know, it's always hard to beat an NFL team like twice like they did. And uh, ultimately, they did it, though. Yeah. The Bengals get their first playoff win in 31 years with a score of 26-19 over the Raiders. Head coach Jack Taylor and punter Kevin Huber gifted a local bar a game ball to celebrate. It's kind of cool to watch a video of that. Yeah, I did, too. Pretty cool, yeah. Big time. 31 years, they finally get a playoff win. 31. And uh, Joe Burrow was asked, how's it feel to get them their first playoff win? What did he say, Jimmer? It's good. Isn't that how he says it? It was cool. It was cool. It was That's cool. right. It was, it was cool. cool. Uh, there was actually <laughs> a borderline controversial play in this, which... Uh, yeah. Play should have been ruled dead. It should have been. It should have been. It, but the whistle should have never been blown, too, because he wasn't out of bounds. Yeah. Not even close, actually. Not close enough to where, not when you watch it. And the whistle was blown like a nut hair before the ball was caught in the back of the end zone. I watched it a few times. But you can clearly hear it. And I don't know how much they actually slow down when I was sitting there looking at it. But regardless, it, me and Danny talked about this last night. And it would, you'd be pissed off no matter which fan base you were in that one. Yeah. You know, you're, you would have been pissed off if they were called dead in Cincinnati. He's like, what the hell? I was even out. I was nowhere near out of bounds. Yeah. And you busted a wide open touchdown. Right. Because he was wide open. Yep. But then you're obviously pissed as a Raiders fan. Be like, you blew the whistle, and they're going to say that they slowed up on the play. Yep. Like I said, if you watch the video, it doesn't look like he actually slows up until the ball literally hits him in the hands. So, still, uh, the NFL did say that they're reviewing. They review every officiating crew after every game. And the wild card weekend, they have a shot to make it to the Super Bowl. They usually roll the same ones, but you have a shot depending on on your scoring system too. They almost said that this crew will have absolutely no shot. So yeah, yeah, it was interesting too. This came across when we were watching the other game last night. <clears throat> they said uh, the NFL talked to the uh, referees involved in the game, and it was clear that the whistle was blown after the catch, so it's a touchdown. Which Anybody that watched that knew it wasn't after the catch. So just for them to say that is yeah. like. Yeah. Well, they had to get their story straight. Yeah. Right. No, yeah, I agree but... with you there. It was, The whistle was before the catch. It was, The ball was clearly out of his hand, though. So, it, But, yeah, the NFL did say that. I'm like, what? No. The ball wasn't <laughs> caught yet. Right. Right. Yeah. But the, you should have said the ball was clearly in the air. You could have said that. Yeah. And everyone would have been okay. Uh, that being said, following that loss, Derek Carr and Max Crosby both uh, – Want Rich Pistachia back as the Raiders head coach, saying he held it all together. And absolutely he did. I mean, look at everything that went on, and they still managed to fight through and and, um, make the playoffs, get a win, the last one, a win and get in kind of deal. I don't know if you all saw also that coach, uh, after that um, playoff loss, he hand wrote a note to every player, uh, you know, a letter, and sent it out to every single person on that team. That's cool. So, yeah. That is cool. I, I think, he, you know, the players showed that they would fight for him, battle for him, win games. And that's yeah, what you want, right? That's exactly what you want. So, yeah, you, you sign this dude immediately. And he's not going to require a bunch of money. No. Right? No. So keep right. him, yeah. sign him, see what happens next year. Yeah. Enroll. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not surprised they want to keep him. It makes sense. The, the interesting thing, so they almost came down to, you know, tie or win the game there. The Raiders um, led the NFL, maybe set the NFL record this year. They had five games that were decided as time ran out to win the game. Oh. So to kick a field goal, score a touchdown, whatever. And that's never happened before. And I'm like, shit, this could be another one. Like, that's crazy. But yeah, that was a bad pass by Carr. Like, I appreciate you guys' fight and everything. But the last play was a really bad throw. I mean, he was trying to squeeze it between two guys, and it was ultimately picked off. He tried to throw a rocket in there. If you actually watch the play... There was a receiver wide open on the same side of the field that he was already looking up in the upper right-hand corner. Like streaking up there by himself, I should say. He wasn't like standing, but he was streaking up there and he was by himself. He tried to squeeze that right up the gut. Tough, tough one. Man. But they they had, a t- they had a very tough season. They did? They had a lot. <laughs> they had more than what we read the list the other day because it like came across as, not a meme, but it came across like that, you know, like, this is everything they went through, and the list is like seven, you know, at least seven or eight devastating things. 
I mean, when when there's a technical murder on there, there's uh, some emails that gets rid of the coach. Uh, you lose a legendary coach to you know he who dies passes away. Some DUIs, some all kinds of shit. Some weapons Jesus. and weapons. Just want to stop. Yeah, I tell you what, the Raiders made this season way more entertaining. I don't know how many bets we won and lost about Raiders games this year because yeah. it didn't oh, yeah. they didn't make sense. Yep. Um but definitely shout out to them. They made this season fucking a lot more fun. So yep. it's too bad. The Bills dominate the Patriots forty seven to seventeen. And I cannot emphasize that enough. Anyone that watched that game. Bills mafia. Uh behind Josh Allen's five passing touchdowns and only four incompletions. Yeah. Really efficient. Uh, Buffalo is the first team with seven or more touchdowns, no punts, and no turnovers in a playoff game. Yeah. Their only one that they did was when they were kneeling at the end of the game. It's <laughs> awesome. Man, Josh Allen, five tutties. Yeah. But what did you say later in the game when he was still out there, Jimmer? Oh, I, was, I was irritated. I was like, what the hell are you doing? That is even that is even my team. I've been pulling for him for most of the year, right? I was on their bandwagon. I wasn't off it at, really at any point. When it came to the AFC East. But that pissed me off. I'm like, why in the hell? What are you doing right now? Because this ball, this game was clearly out of hand. Right. The Patriots weren't doing shit. Yeah. And I understand, like, throwing something in your NFC East rival and you're finally showing we we took this over. Like, kind of getting over that whole Buffalo Bills, like, earlier this season, that weird scoring game. and But having him still in the game was... I'm like, what's your ultimate goal here? Is it to embarrass the Patriots in the first round of the playoffs or to actually win a Super Bowl? Why? There's no point for him to be out there. Yeah, I tell you what, this is the way they played yesterday is the Buffalo Bills team we expected to see this season when we all said they should be the team out of the AFC to make it to the Super Bowl. Yep. That's what we saw. They were so up and down all season. If they can keep, obviously they're not going to beat everybody by 30, but if they can keep playing defense like that and offense like that, Man, Hard they've got stop. a real shot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Bill Belichick, who turned 70 in April, said he still wants to coach in 2022, yeah, 2022 and will begin the process of moving forward after his Patriots team was rocked by the Patriots or by the Bills. Any chance he gets kind of pushed out? No. Not with Robert Kraft. He's too loyal. If you ask me yeah. like a different coach, Robert Kraft, though, no. <clears throat> He wants McDaniels. What if McDaniels says, listen, I'm thinking about bailing hmm. unless you kick he, him out? That, that franchise is nothing without – as in you wouldn't even be having the conversation about this if Belichick wasn't ever there. Yeah, so I you give him as long loyal. as he wants. Yep, as long as he wants, I think. And, uh, you know, you sweeten the pot for McDaniels. Hope, you know, try to keep pay, him around. Like, pay hey, him even more. Right, whatever more it is. Mm-hmm. Be like, hey, this is still you and it's all but even but. but even if McDaniel said, Hey, if you don't do this, I'm leaving, he would let McDaniels walk then. He's yeah. gonna let Bill Belichick do his thing. Yeah, like, dude, you so gave me too. that many championships. Right. Gonna take your time. You're gonna ri- you will ride and die on you. Yeah. So. Uh that being said, another old uh old school guy. Pete Carroll's job security as uh the Seahawks head coach was not discussed during a routine end-of-season meeting Thursday with team chairman Jody Allen and GM John Schneider. So by the sounds of it, he's actually safe for right now. Should he be? No. What do you think, Rio? Yeah, so I think the contract, Russ's contract has him there at least one more year. So maybe they're thinking, hey, let's keep him together for one last run. You know, they they keep saying they don't want to trade Russ. Um, you know, you're guaranteed him one more, at least one more year there. So why not go? Hey, I'm, we're gonna instead of mixing it up with the new coach, let's ride or die one more year. See what we can do. Now, granted, they probably need a lot of things, line help. Um, they have some, some weapons on offense, but like defensive wise, they need some pieces. So maybe that's the route they're going. If they want to keep, and this is this is my thought process, if they want to keep Russell, what they do is first off ask him if they would want him gone, like a private meeting just between GM and him. And then if he says he wants him to go, which I assume he does, because this has been a downward spiral ever since, for the most part, um, ever since that Super Bowl. There's always there's been an issue ever since. 
<clears throat> players always coming back saying something. Defensive players, Sherman, all of them, like down, down the line. And then they haven't really ever regrouped, right? Um, so if he does say that, so if he does say that, then you're like, oh, absolutely. You move on. You pay you pay him his last year as in he's walking. And then you let Russell, for the most part, pick his next coach. That sounds really shitty, but here's here's a fact. You will, you will plummet off the face of the earth without Russell Wilson back there. Unless you're dumb lucky enough to find a quarterback in the rough somewhere. We all know it will happen because what the hell else is on that roster that is going to keep them. They're not even going to be 500 or around 500. You can't be 500 anymore, but you know what I'm saying? They won't even be around there if they lose Russell. Yeah, especially in that division. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That, that's, a, that's a tough go. So, yeah, you basically you cater to your quarterback and you get him involved because that's what was hurting his feelings, right? Start of the season because he wasn't involved in some of the conversations. <coughs> Same thing as Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Eagle starting defensive end Josh Sweat. Who's that? That's my guy that I picked as a breakout player this year, Jimmer. Yeah. And we were all confused. I won't forget that. I'm like, dude, are you thinking? Because in the same division, I thought I was like, are you talking about the Washington? Football teams like defense linemen. No, there's it's his own. Uh, he missed Sunday's playoff game against the Bucks after undergoing a medical procedure to address what the team described as a life-threatening situation. The doctors came out and said the same thing. So they yeah. tried to. He was close. He was close to being able to even play. So they were giving him like, guys, one hell of a strong man. And our work almost got him there. So they had to give themselves a pat on the back. Too. Oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah. No, glad he's, you know, got his operation, whatever, and um, and his fix. I haven't heard of what it actually was, so no, nope. and they didn't have it in there either. So yeah, not sure yeah. what it was. I'm glad he's okay, man. Mm-hmm. That's it. And let's see what we got going here. Uh, the Vikings have requested interviews with Packers Nathaniel Hackett, Cowboys Kellen Moore, Cowboys Dan Quinn. Buccaneers, Todd Bowles, Rams, Kevin O'Connell, Eagles, Jonathan Gannon, 49ers defensive coordinator, D'Amico Ryans, according to a source, knowledge with the, for, with uh, familiar with the situation. Any of those? So this is a two-part question. I'm, I put this in here for a reason. Number one, which name is missing off here that you're surprised is not on here? Number one. And number two, who should it be of this list, I guess, if this is what the list is going to be? Um, I don't know of anybody that's missing. You can't think of one single coach that's missing. Well, we got to be specific. So what you said was requested. There are some coaches Mm -hmm. out there I'd like them to talk to that don't necessarily need to be requested. Right. right, but I Are know I, I know one guy that they haven't interviewed for sure, and I can't remember if they actually interviewed Doug Peterson. Not yet. He's in the like they are expected to interview him though too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So these are I think these are just coaches that come out that are under contract by someone else. Right, but you're still um, missing one that is not under contract, and you could already talk to him. Yeah, Brian Flores. Yeah, I don't that's know. That's the biggest one. That is, but with all the stuff coming out, I don't know. Well, why wouldn't you get his side of the story? All it is is an interview. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you, you don't know, even, like. Hey, it's, it's well, it sounds like the same exact thing that was going on with Zimmer. Do you even, do you be like, I'm just going to, no, not even touch it. I would still take a shot. It's a dysfunctional. Well, you adult. would. But. No, not, not to actually bring him in, but to interview him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you have a conversation with somebody? Because of what someone else says, the dysfunctional Dolphins. That's what I'm going to go by. That would be like the Jets saying, this dude is bad news. I'd at least bring him in. I'm like, uh, I've seen, seen your record on the field. I've seen what you did with that team. I would at least have the conversation and maybe get his side. doesn't mean I would hire him. just means that I want to hear what he's got to say. Yeah. Like, hold on. I see what your product was on the field. That intrigues me. So what really happened with the Dolphins? Yeah, and we still haven't heard Tua talk about it yet. I imagine we'll get some more stories, you yeah, know. Yeah, as the season 
Off season. I want to hear out. it directly yeah. out of their mouth. None of the sources stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I think you brought that up the last time. It kind of seems like it's an opportunity for Miami to be like, oh, uh, this is why we let him go, even though he did what he did. Like, they were looking for an excuse, and yeah, that was it. So uh, we actually talked a little bit about this last night. My two guys that I would like is actually Flores, and if we could pull Harbaugh from Michigan, that would he's actually, I think he's my number one, to be honest with you. But, yeah, those Harbaugh. are the two guys. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he's a winner. Yep. If you if you had the ability to, obviously he's a very strong, hard headed man. So it'd have to be <coughs> it'd have to be a GM that they clearly see eye to eye. Cause that's what exactly what happened with San Francisco. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if that's Balky, who isn't that the guy that's down in Jacksonville that they were all making fun of down there. The fans? Uh, I don't know. Trent Balky? I can't remember. Yeah. Sounds. I, th- I thought he was like the Niners one. I can't remember if he was with with him, though. Yeah. I don't know. That D'Amico Ryan's one is, is interesting. <coughs> um, Along the same lines, defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn. He's going to go be a head coach somewhere. He's shown um, the Turner. What he did with the Cowboys defense is big time. Um, you know how bad that defense was and to turn it around. Um. D'Amico Ryan's, of course. Uh, and then, so I, you know, I was on the Flores deal, too. But, yeah, you're right. Maybe here in a different side of that story, you'll get something else. But probably those three. I ju- like I said, I just want to hear what he had to say in that one. Yeah. Because he, he's going to get – if he's innocent, you're not going to – innocent of that, and it's just some weird shit that came out, whatever. You're going to – you're going to look at the question a little differently. Like when you're getting asked it, like if you're innocent of something, you're not going to, you're not going to bat an eye about it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's like, no, that's bullshit, man. Yeah. I thought, I don't know about Dan Quinn. I, I thought a couple of weeks ago, he basically indicated he's not even going to entertain offers. He's having too much fun with your defense. And but then he turned around and he granted offers. It was like, he basically shut, turned down those teams. He's oh, in, yeah. initially? Yes, yeah. Oh, he's interviewing for the Texans job as well. And okay. he's actually, they, they're they saying he's got the inside track. They're predicting him to go there. Okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I saw that too. But then it, he turned around basically <laughs> went to other teams and that he liked, it seemed like. so. Okay. The Texans, that's. Uh, we already, <laughs> we already <laughs> alluded to it. A uh, little heartbreaker. Cowboys, I think. Uh, well, the Cowboys lost. What was the final score of it? I didn't even see. 23-17. 23-17. But the story of the day was actually. Debo Samuel balling out. No. Oh. Did he? Did he? <laughs> he did. But he did, yes. Yeah. And Brandon Ayuk was actually receiving. But either either way, that wasn't the story of the day. The story of the day in this game was what? Last uh, non-play of the game, the last seconds oh, of the game. Oh, no, 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 not even that. The story of the game, the whole oh, game. Oh, yeah, penalties, oh, penalties was a big deal Penalties. Dallas, Cow- Cowboys they shot still. themselves in the dick. Cow- Cowboys still, you know, getting those penalties, so. Yep. Yeah. And then, now, go ahead. Uh, your last your last play, which was. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. So, we're in this uh, damp, cold garage, right? Super so, we're warm. trying to. Super we're, warm. Super warm. We're trying to watch this game between my phone and Jimmer's computer, and, uh, Back and forth, and we're like, okay, fuck it. We just threw it on my phone, and literally the game was over. And it's like, what the hell? And so watching the replay, turns out the last play, there was a few seconds left, and the center got down, grabbed the ball, and was about to snap it, but the umpire has to touch it. Yeah, the right? ref has to touch it. But then so, he picked it up and then put it, like, underneath him. And, yeah, then, so and, then, and then pulled it back it to where, where it should be. Yeah, yeah, it was 100% weird. And the way he ran into Dak and the – Yeah. But Either like way, we said, so the last play itself – was highly questionable anyway. It was a yeah. it was a quarterback sneak run, seventeen yard run. Yeah. yeah, right up the gut, straight up the middle straight up of the, the middle, field. straight up what the middle the of the field. Yeah. Now I I see what they were doing because it was literally designed to do this, and then because everybody ran with him so that they could get up and basically like try to snap this. Yeah. A seasoned vet should have known, or and this is, I, I shouldn't say seasoned vet because this happens to a lot of people all the time. They don't think about it; they're thinking about just getting the ball down, right? Yeah. The move that should have happened if you wanted that to work was Dak should have held the ball and instantly turned back around and find the ref to hand him the ball so that he has to touch the ball yep. for a snap to happen, right? Mm-hmm. 
I still think, and usually I'm a cowboy hater at heart. I still think that that was still a little janky with the uh, with the ref. Like not yeah. only did he like plow through and like dislodge, right. but then he moved the ball too. Right. Like so he, he couldn't got even there. Get it. The center yeah. couldn't even get it. It so was you, weird. You but... lost a second. Right. I mean, that's enough of a time for him to pick it up, snap, and well, you have one shot it, at the end zone. Then. It, so he moved it. But what was the center just at the wrong spot? So they no no, no 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 no. So like, you watch him move it back towards his legs, no, but anything. then, then yeah. bring but then bring it back exactly it back where forward. he had it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was just in the way for too long. It seemed yeah. like, but yeah. Re- regardless, shot I agree. The they did right, and the Niners earned it. I, I agree with that. Yeah. But a second, one second, one gives second you a chance you to chuck it up. And Amari can come down. CD can come down with that well, ball. Oh, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. It wouldn't even be a full blown chuck. It was what at like thirty yard line. Like thirty. So that's a that's a catchable pass that yeah. isn't like a lob you know you could actually run a route with that yeah good yeah you can throw one underneath but either way like you said yeah. they were vastly um uh overplayed or whatever they, they they were overmatched for most of this most of it was by their own shooting themselves in the foot and then end up having to punt or yeah whatever but they did make yeah. it interesting bosa went out yeah this may have cost Bo- yeah nick I, bosa did go out with the concussion from what it sounds like this may you know how bad the play calling was too, on the offensive side. Might may have went cost Kellen Moore his went uh, away from the running, went away from the run, Again. and just some of the play calls were. So just they really weren't bad. out of this game for the longest time, right? That it was sixteen to seven forever, and that's with the defense like balling out from the Niners, right? But with them balling out, exactly what you're saying, they went away from the run like it was non-existent. Yeah. Well, so I don't I can't speak for Pollard, right? But what I just saw come across was Zeke was playing with a spraying uh PCL to the whole game. So No, but Pollard was looking sexy though. Pollard like, was looking like good. he has so all you year. Can still run right. I'm just saying on Zeke's yeah. side of it. I yeah, thought he looked Zeke's. decent for that being yeah. the case, but yeah. No, absolutely. He's been they went they went away from it. And just like I think we all agreed on right out of the gate was we don't believe Kellen Moore is ready for a head coaching gig in the NFL. And yeah, this right. stuff like that. Yeah, it proves. And maybe you're not even, dare I say this, but maybe you're not even with the right coach to teach you stuff like that because he's had his own time clock issues time. Yeah. multiple times. Like, that isn't who you should be learning from anyway, right? Yeah. Yep. But I think he is. I, I honestly think he should think about going uh, some version of college, college. if you want to do a head coach. Yep. I think you can learn well. together. Kids aren't going to beat you down because you're learning with them exactly. also. And you have a fun offense most of the time that you should. That will tra- attract yeah. players. So. Yep. Um, so that's what I got for news news. But I do have a wonderful question for you gentlemen. What is <laughs> – so there's a story we, we rolled. Um, it wasn't a story. It actually happened. A man we worked with. Was seen at Walmart carrying up some goofy items to the register that don't quite mesh together. He wasn't in. in he wasn't at the register yet, but, but he was. He up, was right? going to be headed there real he, soon. Yeah, he was heading there real soon. So that brings me to my question for you, gentlemen: What is the worst combination of items you could take to a register that the cashier may be thinking? Like what the hell is going on here? Whether it be criminal, sexual, whatever the scenario be, let's leave it to three though. Three items, but it's like legit. Could be something for at home. Like it doesn't have to. Yeah, be. you're not trying to make them. No, no, no. You, you're not trying to. You literally are innocent. Like you're fit. Like you're feeling. Oh, I forgot this. Or I'm ran out of this. And there's oddball things. You take it up to the register. Well, you actually look at it. They're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah, I've thought about this before. I've seen some people bring up weird shit sometimes, right? Um, <clears throat> peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> Condoms and dog treats. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty fucked up. <laughs> that would be pretty if, fucked if up. If the person at the register, assuming you're not doing like self-checkout, doesn't ask you some questions, <laughs> man, there's a, there's a problem. Right. <laughs> it sounds like a typical fucking Dude. store shopping oh, yeah. for this like, guy, <laughs> just for the peanut butter alone. And right. he loves his dog, so he does like getting the treats. Right. <laughs> the condoms. I didn't think you rolled that way. Yeah, but. that's that's new, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you never know. Yeah. yeah. What do you got? And probably Vaseline, cucumbers, and some condoms. Yes. <laughs> yes. What? I'm just trying to save, save not having any babies, right? Uh, got to 
cucumbers for my garden salad I'm about to have. How is it a, so we're all going to end up keeping this one sexual. Mine is definitely going to be uh, candy, <laughs> candy, uh, condoms, and Tylenol PM. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Lollipops. Good time. There used to be, like, before TikTok came out, there used to be these guys that would go in and buy fucked up shit just to get, like, a reaction. And they, it would always be something like a wheelbarrow, a shovel, like, face masks because it's cold outside, you know? Yeah. And, like, a rope or some shit <laughs> like that just to get the reaction from people. <laughs> and, like, maybe concrete bricks or something. I wonder you know? if there's the same guys well, that are doing the videos that... Oh, gosh, I've seen a couple of them, but uh, they call this guy, and they're like, yeah, I need you to tow my car. And they're like, yeah, it's back here. I just need you to tow it out. And they had put a, a crane and put a car in a tree. And oh, they're just yeah, like, uh, they're yes, just I looking all that. dumb or whatever. He's like, where is it? And he's like, yeah, it's just up there. I need you to pull it down. What the hell? <laughs> and, like, he's acting all, yeah, if you just pull it down and we can roll it over, just, it should be good to go. Just not too hard, Yeah, right? it's not too hard. Yeah. Just kind of, like, a soft landing. <laughs> or or the, I seen them do another one. It was like, yeah, I got a critter I kept on trying to catch or whatever, and they had mashed a couple, like, small-ass cages down and left them around, and uh, they're like, uh, they called a pest control. They're like, yeah, he's in here. And they got somebody put a fucking bear in the house. Oh, and shit. They brought it in. And he's like, oh, that's a bear. Oh, he's like, yeah, God, man. That's awesome. He keeps growling at me. <laughs> it is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. The same guys. But so I like it. That's do, do you want your, do we want our weird law? Or are we going to wait? Sure, throw it at us. Yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs> okay. In Florida. It is illegal to pass wind in a public place after 6 p.m. on Thursdays. Jimmer would be in prison. <laughs> I was after 6. <laughs> it's not Thursday, though, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Could you imagine if they enforced these laws that... Yeah. You're not allowed to fart Yeah. after 6 p.m. on Thursdays. Gonna have to plug that hole up, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you better, what were you supposed to do like before Beano was invented? Right. Like how are you so clench your <laughs> clench your cheeks? Do you, do you realize how badly that sucks and hurts to hold a fart in and it goes back up into your stomach? Like, Cause you get stomach <laughs> pain from that shit. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yep. let her rip, man. That is horse shit. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I got for a weird law. Okay. So for those of you that don't know and haven't checked out the videos we've thrown out on TikTok. Jimmer also had to pay up on a bet Ooh. Yes. yesterday. Yes, snow I challenge. Snow challenge. And uh, he had to out. drop his ass into some snow, and uh, mm -hmm. he was pretty cold. That well, hold was. on. So you guys, thanks for reminding me, because you guys owe me, or Rio owes me a fucking shot, because I had to do this twice. Hold on. You owe me a shot, too. No, you owe me a shot. You owe me a shot. We'll have to save him for Friday, then. We're doing so, the shots get, on Friday? I'm probably going to get hammered Friday. Okay. Gotta, right. yeah, we got to get that shit down at some point. Hey, we have to. Dude, it's not going. Oh, yeah. He, so was, I, uh, he was supposed to do a shot before he set in. Yep. Right? Yep. Uh, I owe, no, I'll take it then. I owe two I'll take, I'll take the for the Raiders game. Yeah, and I owe two for the Cowboys game. And though. Jimmer won both of those, though. So well, Yeah, he had nothing. So he's got this one, though. Yeah. That's all right. All right. Cool. So you guys owe some? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did bet. We did two different bets. Oh, yeah. On those so games. You guys can pay up now. Yeah. Whoa, you were already tossing off Friday. No, no, <laughs> no, not taking it off now. See, this is where you're supposed to fill your glass up to ladies and gentlemen. Okay, do I we, do have can one. We get that peach? Can we just pay up with that? <laughs> no, that's got to be last for sure. This stuff's got to get done, gentlemen. Throw it over here, Rio. God, we got to get it done, right? Well, while we're doing this, Rio, you want to do your questions? Let's do that. Uh, I can certainly do that. Crank that, soldier boy. All right. Number one, what sport would be the funniest to add a mandatory amount of alcohol to? I would say. You know what? I'd say volleyball. And you know why I'd say volleyball? Because anyone that's played like rec league volleyball or, cro or definitely co-ed. Cheers to our heartbreak. Cheers to the heartbreak. Cheers. Cheers to the heartbreak. Yeah, baby. 
That's horrible. Yeah, that doesn't get any better. That has not gotten any better. Luke, Mm-mm. Luke, we hate you for this. Oh, absolutely. Especially when I've been spoiling myself with right. some of that Sir Winston. Good God, this is bad. This uh, and I. Uh, so I would have to go volleyball. So and what I mean by that is it gets intense. Like it starts getting a little testy because dudes are like slamming the ball, you know, like pu- punching the ball down. You add some alcohol to that. Not some. You said a mandatory minimum. Mm-hmm. So yeah. people are getting bombed, right? Oh, right. Has to be a, yeah, a minimum. Oh, there'd be some dumb, dumb shit. Yeah. There'd be some anger. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. They, I played in a lot of leagues down in Des Moines, <coughs> and there's plenty of beverages going around in those down there during the summertime. Not everybody gets hammered, but the ones that do, dude, it gets it gets crazy. Hell <laughs> you yeah. tell the difference, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So now if you put a mandatory on it, that means everybody's getting Everybody's, there. everybody's get getting juice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think, Danny? I'm going to go curling. I think curling would be fucking, <laughs> what? That'd be fun. I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> Falling yeah. over on the ice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What about you? Uh, it would have to be running, like running marathons or anything. <laughs> yes. You do like a beer oh. mile or something. Everybody's got to slam a beer. You're just falling over. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, goodness. imagine running a marathon, having to drink 26 and a half or whatever it is. Dude, they, it would take forever. You know, how many, you know how many times I piss as soon as I? Oh, my God. As Dude, soon just as piss you, yourself. And just let it go. Just let it go, just man. Let it go, man. We don't know if it's sweat or if it's piss, <laughs> but hey. Yeah. God. Okay. All right. Um, if you could have a superpower, which one would it be? I have one. Uh, yeah, so what other one would you do? Gotcha. So if you could have a second, <laughs> Danny. Man. <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm just trying to make sure my time is It's past it. 6 p.m. <laughs> yeah, it is. What's going on over there? <clears throat> I rest not, that, man. Not Florida. It's not Thursday. Yeah. Um... Right. But we wish Man. we were in Florida on a Thursday. So. Yeah, true that. It's it's tough. So I think my top two are being invisible and flying, right? Being invisible for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think I got to go flying. I think that'd be badass. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What would your superpower I be? I think it would have to be, so you, you, you took the, flying. It was pretty good. I was leaning towards invisibility, but like you said, that'd be literally for all the wrong reasons. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, superhuman strength. Oh, okay. Okay. What would you do with it? <laughs> I'd pick up buildings and shit. <laughs> pick up buildings and I pick shit. up, I like, when I need to move my vehicle, it want to be getting started. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of like, what is that, Mr. Incredible? Okay, just, yeah. <laughs> just picks it up like that? Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, Mine would have to be time like i could stop time you know oh because then i would just I pause time think, walk into a I bank think about da, that da, 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 and take a couple of milli and walk right out nobody know <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. or okay go, that's or, good or time travel in general like if you yeah, yeah. oh man mm-hmm. damn mm-hmm. it but then Add, see time see travel you worry about the butterfly effect man i give no shits i'd roll we, the uh, dice we'd roll the dice son right i'm just pausing time boop Pausing. Everybody freezes where they're at, and then it continues. So nothing gets messed up except for the couple milli I'm about to couple snag. Couple milli, yeah. <laughs> I like it. Um, what is your craziest experience in a hotel? Besides Danny's transportation teleportation into somebody else's room, you got anything else? That's definitely my craziest. I don't know if I have much else that are okay. crazy on that. For for those of y'all that don't know, um, Danny woke up in another hotel room, uh, the floor below his. Directly has, below. Directly mm-hmm. below. He has no idea how he got there. Teleportation. Yeah. Teleportation. Okay. And what about you? <laughs> I have one. I'm, I don't think I should say this one. Go ahead. Say it. New. No. Yes. New. No. Yeah. Just I'm, use the Okoboji one. We walked in and there was like yeah, that. Oh well, I thought you were talking about just the overall. You can, yeah, you but if what, you have one that you don't, you know what? Actually, talk about, yeah. So I'll I'll go from what kind of what you're saying. I'm not gonna roll with the Okaboji one. I'm gonna roll with another one, and that is the one down in uh, what was that West Des Moines? We stayed at a Super Eight. Now, it looked like it was okay, actually, from the outside. You go in the room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were the nastiest room you could possibly think of. Anything you could possibly think of. It, it was wrong. We had ACs when it was hot. Or, no, sorry. The heaters weren't working. And it was that's the reason why we were staying. It was a winter storm. 
uh, the the bed the bed sheets I think were stained. There was like human hair and shit in the uh, in the in the sink in the bathroom or uh, like in the tub. Uh, yeah, I think we all slept que- on top of the sheets. Questionable there. dirty panties were in ours, I think, and yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. I've never had a good experience of Super Eights, so we had that in my the very first time I did a powerlifting meet. I went with Sam over to Dubuque. And I stayed, I looked online to, for a hotel, Super 8, had like a palm tree outside, right? Like a big <laughs> fake one, like it looked kind of cool. I'm like, okay, it has a swimming pool and everything. And we got there, and the swimming pool, um, it was about three inches deep of water, but it was it looked like a swamp, right? <laughs> and then <laughs> wow. and then we we go up into the room, and I, I'm pretty sure Sam had to clean the shower uh, because it was fucking terrible. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I've never had a good experience of Super 8s, to be honest with you. No. Yeah, they're off the list. No, it's official. I think yeah. I've had a couple of them like that. Yeah. So I ran into another one like that and might have been Dubuque also. Might have been. Yeah. Was that for one of those? Was meets, that where yeah. your brother was like? Uh, yeah. He brought tapping his wife. Yep. Yep. Hard as shit. Like <laughs> just making her squeal. Whoa. Dead. No, it was like, fucking loud. What do you mean? But that tap? was it. What, what do you mean tapping? Like punching? No. Punching. Uh, um. Pun- yep. Punch in the fucking kitty box. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna message me as soon as he listens to this. He'll, yeah. he'll be dying. Uh, yeah, he, no, yeah, he, funny. He, dude. Like she, right. she was out of breath. <laughs> it was we go uh, because we, we go outside and have a couple of drinks. They come out and both of them all hair a little messed up, all sweaty and yep. Like, I would ask what you were doing, but the whole neighborhood could hear you. So because <laughs> yeah. they just met in person, that was the first they time they had just met. met. Yeah. Oh man, get yeah. It. Oh, they right. got it. Yeah. Uh, they've been talking on the inter- internet for quite a while, but yeah. it's the first time in person meeting. And, okay. Uh, but yeah, that was a nasty hotel, too. Getting yeah, it acquainted. Was. That was gross. So, what about you? You've had some interesting hotel experiences, I too. I have. Yeah, and usually, I'll go with usually one. Usually with other boys. Back in, well, <laughs> they were men, but, well, mm. eh. <laughs> you, you were a young lad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to take us all the way back to 2003. Ooh. And um, you like six, <laughs> I was ten, <laughs> Ooh, I believe. Damn, ten, eleven, somewhere right there. It, um, was, it wasn't with your uncle, was it? It wasn't high with my uncle. Miss you. <laughs> Won't see him for another twenty years in prison. Oh, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> love you. Uh, <clears throat> I always wonder why mom hated you. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we took a family trip to New York City, and we're gonna stay couple days, you know, four days or five days in New York City, take a um, train to Buffalo, New York. That's why I'm Bill's Mafia fan. Bill's my Mafia. Dad, my, dad, my dad's from Buffalo. I have a bunch of Buffalo stuff. Uh, but that's what, you know, the plan was. And um, we were in the city for a couple days and whatnot, having a good time doing, you know, all the sightseeing stuff. And I, I remember walking down um broadway and you know it shows the screen tvs and everything you know down in broadway and all of a sudden they just like froze and went black and um i was like what the heck and then we heard a generator kick on behind us a big old generator and my dad was like well that's weird like that's a big old diesel generator not like a small one that was like a massive one and um turns out power had went out all in new york city and like across part of the eastern seaboard um people started getting kicked out of their hotels because they didn't have any power or anything like that so they're kicking people out people are sleeping on the street uh places were selling out of food like crazy um oh wow right we went to go you know it kind of dawned on us like oh shit like we need to get some food or something for the night because we were leaving the next morning on a train to buffalo well everything's running out of food or whatnot or just closing up in general so we end up having to eat like uh, hot dog buns filled with sauerkraut because they ran out of the Ugh. yeah they ran out of the hot dogs. Um, a <laughs> Snapple van pulled up and we're handing out free Snapples, um, so that was pretty cool. Hey, shout out to Snapple! Yeah, shout yeah. out, shout out yeah. to Snapple! Some, yeah. some good guys. Um, our hotel fortunately let us stay. There's no AC or nothing. It was hot, so we opened the windows and. Um, you know, no power. That's why I always carry a flashlight whenever I take a vacation now is because you couldn't see anything. Trying to get up to our hotel room and stuff, you know, had to take the stairs and stuff. Um, so we spent the night, had no water in the morning, you know, had just the pressure, had traveled all the way down the uh, the building 
and no water in the morning. <laughs> Get got on the train in the morning to go to Buffalo. We had to sit on the tracks for a couple hours because we didn't know if another train was coming from the other way. Oh, yeah. Dude. So we had to sit until, until we it made sure up. it made sure it had switched over to the other side or whatever. And uh, yeah, because there was no power wow. coming in and out. Wow. And uh, ended up getting to Buffalo and. Power was restored, I think, in about a day, day and a half, or something like that. And uh, yeah, pretty crazy experience. No doubt. Uh, definitely. So was that about the same time as Live Free or Die Hard? <laughs> I don't know. Might have been. <laughs> but uh, what year was? But yeah, pretty crazy experience, I tell you. And that was one of the things I'll always carry a, wow. a flashlight with me anytime I travel now, just because of that right there. You know, there's people I can't see, can't see in my room, or trying to get up to their room, and what floor are we on, and um, you know, my uncle at the time, uh, he was a heavy smoker, so I had a lighter. And then I think somebody else in our group had a flashlight and it's like, okay, I will always carry a flashlight no matter where I go. Yeah. Pretty crazy experience. Hmm. No that doubt. Is. Damn. So, yeah. That's a little scary. Yeah, definitely. Especially cause you said it was what? 2003. Yep. So it was only a couple of years after nine. 11. 11. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody's going crazy thinking it was like a terrorist attack and stuff. Uh, on the power board. Damn. Yeah. It was it was definitely freaky. My mom uh, bought newspapers uh, and saved them. We have them from the clippings or whatever from that day or the day, you know, when it come out. So, yeah, Damn. pretty crazy. Damn, yeah. It is into the second quarter, and it is zero to zero, gentlemen. In, Steelers. Into geez. the second? Wow. No, yeah, into the second. Yep. Oh, into the second. Into the second. So 11 minutes left in the second. All right. So zero zero and Patty Mahomes has an interception. Whoosh. Let's go, Pittsburgh. Pitt. Yeah, yeah. So. Boom. What do we I mean we touched on the games a little bit. Is there anything specific we want to go through? Uh so besides the boys, which was a highly picked upset mm-hmm. across the industry in general, right? Across the sports industry. It was a e- it, it wasn't an easy pick, but I mean, it just seems like that's the one everyone went with. Is yeah. what I should say. If somebody was going to get beat, it was going to be the Cowboys. Yeah, and well, here's why I'm excited for that because I genuinely think the best shot for somebody to beat Green Bay and Lambeau is San Francisco in their run game. I think so. Yeah, and so they actually so San Fran will go to Lambeau next week. Um, I think that's going to be a huge game. I think they've got a really good shot to actually beat them. Maybe the best shot the way they play. So, so Buccaneers would be facing the winner of the Cardinals and Rams. Yep. Right. So we went over some of them. I'm not going to go over like a bunch of stats or anything like that, but we, we talked about the Bengals winning and getting that, the city and the organization and um, the fans monkey off their back. Right. Yep. Can they do it? Can they do it all? I don't know. Um, the way that defense is, the, we know the offense can score. Yeah. They have it, all the weapons. W- will the defense continue? Can they play at a decent level to get the offense more possessions than the other offense is what it's going to be down. I mean, they don't have to play, and they are not that superstar, high-powered defense, you know, getting takeaways like crazy. But can yep. they – hold the other teams to three points or make a couple stops to give their offense a chance with the ball enough times to win the game. Um, you know, and they have, they've shown they can't do that consistently all year. So, but it's all about getting hot, you know, and, uh, and we talked about time? the 49ers, man, that that's exactly what they're doing. They got hot yep. at the right time and they're rolling into the playoffs, but um, I'd like to see it. I think I, I like their young core. I think I do agree with you. They got to experience that heartbreak first, and it's probably going to happen before they really figure out how to gel. You know, in a tight in the in a playoff run. Um, so if the Steelers pull pull off this upset, they will go face the Titans, and then the Bills and the Bengals will play each other. Right? It's one hell of a tough road for the Bengals, either which way. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yep. But yeah, so it looks like the Bengals go to Tennessee for sure. 
Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. On... Depending on if Pittsburgh. If Pittsburgh wins, yeah, no, the lowest Pittsburgh, seed. If, yeah, if Pittsburgh wins, the, they go The lowest there. seed would go to Tennessee. Yep. Oh, okay. That's the way the bracket that's, sits Yeah, right that's now. what yep. we're, I see. Yep, that's I see. What we're okay. talking about. Yep. I think the Bengals would want to go up to Tennessee out of all those other scenarios, though, yep. right? Yep. Because we've talked about it. The, the, ten, the Titans are probably the least – fearful number one seed maybe in recent history that i could think of Mm -hmm. and out of all the remaining opponents here you know yeah what are you thinking danny i for sure don't want to play the bills so yeah i agree with that do you think Um, the Bengals have a shot though a legit shot no i i think the youth it kind of played into what rio's saying i think the youth is a big deal for them um they've got a Fuck around and lose a close game in the playoffs and get yep. motivated and build. They got to build a little bit more too. Yep. That and they got that fir- awesome. They got that first step out of the way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, that, so that's, that's a huge a bit, monkey that's a, up your back. That's yeah, a, and that's a huge step for them too as their growth. Yep. I, I'm with you guys on that. I was just curious if you believed uh, a different way on it because I actually think that most teams. I've told you that before. Ninety, ninety nine percent of teams that go through and win a Super Bowl or it doesn't matter NBA Finals. You have to have heartbreak to actually push through at some point, maybe a year, maybe a few years down the road, before you actually become successful. And the Bengals got that, got this awesome feel. They were also gifted the Raiders at home. And now you're about to go against every other team that is a way more experienced at doing this right now. And they're a little, and all the remaining teams are a little more balanced. Yeah. Right, all around balanced, and they basically the high majority of them left to actually have the same almost same style of off, or same strength in offense. They can do the same thing. You can they can toss up forty something points, but I think they all of them have a better defense than you, consistent better defense, consistent better. Yeah, and they and they've yep. been there. Right, mm-hmm. there's nothing shocking about any of this. Were you shocked by the Bills and or the, the or the Patriots if you want to put it that way? No, the yeah. way they did it, that, for sure. Yeah, that's what I mean but, about the score, not the not the win loss, but the actual score, and, and wish they did it. Uh, the, yeah, the score because uh, Bills' defense usually plays pretty well and can keep them in games. Um, so for them to get hammered like that was a surprise. Now I thought the Bills would win, uh, and they did. Just the score by how much is kind of crazy. Yeah, it really felt you, – you touched on it earlier, but it really felt like they just wanted to put a stamp on it and say this is our division for the foreseeable future. And, you know, I mean, because if you think back to when the Patriots would just put it to everybody, especially in that division, they didn't give a shit. They dropped 50, you know, be 50-7 to seven or 50-3 to three all the time. So I think they're just trying to give them a little taste. Like, listen, this is what's going to happen until mm-hmm. we say otherwise, like type of a deal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, that is where we're at. Mm, gentlemen, I wasn't really shocked by any part. Uh, Steelers are up seven to zero. Yeah, let's go Steelers. I uh, do not know how we, they got it. On our drive back, we did talk about this. In this game, every motherfucker and their mom is betting on the Chiefs. Besides that, obviously that huge bet. Mm-hmm. A couple other guys, right? If the Steelers the, win, Vegas is just going to be rolling, man. Oh, yeah. in money, just fucking holy cow. Um. Yeah, so that bet wasn't a money line, though. It's still a huge chunk. Still, yeah, you're right. It's yeah, still, it's but a money line, if yeah. you would have put 220 on the money line? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I'm with you 100%. Like, yeah. all the money that is pouring that way, mm-hmm. you know, um, and the money line bets that would have went the other way. Because you said it was, what, plus 700 yeah, at, the, at one point? It was something ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. If they pull this off. We're talking something pretty stupid. I do not know how they got the touchdown. Was it defensive? It was a defensive touchdown. T.J. Watt. Yeah. Nice. T.J. Watt with the pass defense. Uh, let's see. So another pick for Patty Mahomes. I think T.J. Watt's 26-yard fumble recovery. Ah, fumble. Okay. I mean, the Steelers are 9-2 and two with him in the lineup. When he plays sixty percent or more, yeah. T.J. It, Watt, he is something special, man. Jesus, you knew the one dude you needed to block, right? <laughs> Coming into yeah. that, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, anything special you guys want to chat about when it comes to uh, comes about 
the last game that technically is coming tomorrow since we're not going to be here tomorrow? Uh, I think it's going to be a tough game. I think it's going to be whoever has the ball last. You yeah. know, it's division game. You know, no matter what either team has done in the last and how they've looked, it's going to be tough. I don't think we'll see a blowout, you know, and uh be interesting. I think it'll be a damn good game. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, close. Should be. Should be close. They they match up. So the NFC West has done this for a while. Like, even when the Cardinals were irrelevant, right? They were hanging with their own. Like, they would upset the Seahawks, you know, um, up in Seattle when, Seahawk, when the Seahawks were rolling, you know, for years. The Niners. This is just kind of what they do in that division. They, you can't count a win. Yeah. So this is gonna be a very tough game, either which way. I think it'd be. I think it's gonna be a damn good game to watch. Yep. Oh yeah. Maybe even the best one of them all, considering. Well, the Cowboys won. Enter stopped. Interestingly, they still had a shot. The yeah, overall wasn't the, a the, great the, game, but. right? And the Raiders were kind of was sloppy too, yeah. and they came down to the one. So yes. I'm thinking this won't be as I'm hoping it won't right. be. Nobody's gonna. I don't think it's gonna be that roaring back. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be neck for neck. So I think it's gonna be that that type of game. But yeah, that's what I got, gentlemen. Boom! I love it. Playoffs, baby. Playoffs. Are good. Uh, who's got to make sense tonight? You want me to go? Let's go, go Jimmer. Here? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So, did I do a Valentine's Day one yet? Uh, do not think so, buddy. A guy at work. Did I say that one out loud? You know him. Uh, I know the story, but no, you have not. I have not it. done that one no. yet? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, when I was a temp, uh, there was another gentleman that also was working as a temp at the place that I'm currently employed at as a full-time guy. And uh, he worked another job, too. So he worked a full-time job at uh, Curry's or Graham. He was at one of those two. I can't remember which one. But he was at one of those two. And then he would come work over here for at least four hours. His wife, he said, was uh, pretty money-hungry, blah, blah, blah. Don't know this for a fact. That's just what he would say. Or if they're labeling bags, flipping and sticking, whatever we're doing. So he comes. Uh, he comes to work one night. And it was Valentine's Day. And he uh, he says he has to go, like, right now. Now, I wasn't up there at this time. I actually was put into a room for the night, and a uh, bagging room maybe. They said Russ had to go home. Emergency. Okay. Didn't think anything about it. Actually, I got to rewind a little bit. So he told me the day before, he's like, hey, you know, uh, oh, he's telling me about his wife giving him shit because he was working on Valentine's Day. Again, this is a part time gig. That's what it was. And it was a part time gig, right? He already worked his full time job for the day. She was giving him shit like, why don't you come home? It's Valentine's Day. You take one half night off of the temp job. No, no, no. I'm sticking with it. Going to work. So she was pissed. Fast forward to the night of that. He goes home early. No one knows really why. Next day, he comes back. I'm like, oh, went home a little early. She must have tugged at your heartstrings or something. You felt a little bad. She was tugging at something else, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no. Wish that was it. No, I shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> you have my attention. What? <laughs> yeah, I farted and I shit myself. <laughs> so I went up to so I went up to uh God, I think it was Dan. Went up to the lead. Hey, I gotta go. I have a I have a, a family emergency. When you're a temp there you don't have much to explain really. It's just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he said he was so he tells me the story too. It goes on. He's telling me, he's like, yeah, I get home, I sneak in, get into the bathroom, you know, 
<laughs> turn the bath on so that I can rinse my shitty drawers out. And uh, I'm sitting there grinding away at those, you know, kind of brushing them out, cleaning up my, clean my ass up, and hear a knock on the door, and I'm like, "What? What's up?" Is his wife? His wife's like, um, "Who? What are you doing in there? I thought I thought you had to work tonight." He's like, "Honey, you really got." He's like shouting through the door, "You really got to me. I felt really bad, so I decided to come home and surprise you. I'm just getting showered up so I could take you out to dinner." <laughs> oh my god! Yes. <laughs> And he tells me this whole thing himself. Right, dude. If you show yourself, who you telling? <coughs> nobody. Fucking nobody. 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 Nah. Are you no. are you taking that to the grave too? Uh, you know it. So like, even if it's like, hey, someone, dude, Chris, you had to shit yourself. There's some like a fucking little bit of rundown right here. Not me, brother. Dude, I heard you fart nasty style over there. So am I blown out? No, not here. Uh, oh. by the way, Patrick Mahomes has tied the game with a pass to Jerick McKinnon, seven to seven. All right, we got a ball game. But even so, I, I just laugh my ass off. We have way too many, and I can sit here and go down the list, and we're going to add to these lists. There's way too many shit stories that happen at our place of employment. That's true. Or away from. Or away for oh, some oh, people. Or away in a museum bathroom. But yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like, <laughs> he, just what he's like, no, honey, I felt you get really got to me. I felt really bad, so I decided to come home. And take you out for dinner while he's scrubbing his shitty drawers, he said, <laughs> while he was scrubbing them. Oh, man, I man. hope he cleaned himself up for that night. Oh, oh yeah. God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your words of wisdom on that, Jimmy? My words of wisdom. If you shit he, yourself, don't tell nobody. For yeah, there He, you, he there come you right into work and told him. Yeah, yeah. Told somebody. See, he almost had this perfect. Yeah. He almost had this perfect until he told me. Yep. He shouldn't have told me that. No, you, you don't tell because nobody. Because he had the perfect thing. He had it played off to his wife. It was no big deal. Yeah. He even had the sentimental part of it. Right. There's no he reason had, to tell you. Yeah, there was literally no reason to Zero. tell me. And this dude was also like six foot eight. So that's a long way for that fucking poo to be making its way down your pants. <laughs> a lot of cleanup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tough. Is this the same guy that would like pick on you? Six eight? No, no, no that, that, that was that dude wasn't six eight. You guys have some fucking big boys working. Talk about something. Dude, we could feel yeah, and uh, girls. We could feel the basketball and team, girls. Dude. <laughs> uh, Danny, have you ever shit yourself? There's no time. He's shitting six times a day. Yeah, I poop a lot, so I don't really. There's no no concern. Be a lot that, of why time. why did you bail him out on that? He was actually contemplating giving right. an answer. Yeah, I'm trying to on. think of a good like time where. I could have. It was close, or yeah. maybe he did a little bit. <clears throat> no, no, I haven't shit myself. Sorry. Liar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at that face. There's You'll never know. Be. I'm taking it to the <laughs> There's got to be. Yeah, at least you're sticking with it. One day but we're going to tie him down and his lock him in a sock up His weightlifting days? All that protein he's packing and all that? And then mm. you go and lift something? You tell me not one time did you shit yourself? Yeah. Dude, okay. So on that note, hilarious story. <laughs> <laughs> so that does happen all the time in powerlifting, right? But uh, the guy that got me into powerlifting, his name's Wes Keith, uh, down at 22nd Street Barbell. So shout out to Wes. But the, my very first powerlifting meet I went to, <clears throat> he's over there warming up on deadlifts and stuff. And he's quick, you know, snappy lifting, whatever. And all of a sudden, he kind of awkwardly starts walking by. And he did not have to say anything to me, but he's like, bro, just shit my pants. Got to go get cleaned up. <laughs> and, he's about, and he's about to fucking go on. And as the platform is start lifting, he had to book into the bathroom and clean the nugget out of his fucking <laughs> out of his pants. He comes back in, just fucking shit eating grin. I'm like, oh my god, buddy. Just what? that's exactly that's Shut exactly that's exactly how he said it. He just comes up right next to me, bro. Did you shit my pants? Gotta go. And he's like, fucking, he just <laughs> beeline to the bathroom. Whoa, that is shit my, awesome. Shit my pants gotta this go. man is hilarious. <laughs> shit my pants, gotta go. Yeah, you know, he just comes back and looks at me, smirking. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. oh wow. Damn, Jeez. dude. <laughs> oh my god, she shit myself. Gotta go. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. All right. Damn. Well, boys, I think that about wraps her up. We've got a good game tonight. One more game tomorrow. Um, I don't know how things are gonna wrap up, but hopefully Friday I'll be in. I won't be here Wednesday for sure. We'll see how Friday looks. It's gonna be a long week. I gotta travel. So these boys are gonna carry the show with maybe a special guest on Wednesday. So Yeah, yeah. 
Looking forward to hearing we'll see that. How ho- see how it goes. Not hoes. Goes. Okay. Boats and hoes. Boats and hoes. Boats and hoes. Boats and hoes. Boom. Well, yeah, definitely, guys. Uh, make sure you're you know liking, following on the socials and things. Podcast is available everywhere you find your podcast, which includes where? Facebook, Spotify, Apple, uh, YouTube, uh, every other place that you may get it for the most part. Yeah. Working on Pandora, aren't you? Yeah, I got Pandora going. They just got a, apparently it's like four to eight weeks to approve. Hey, I'm okay with that. That means it's going. So we're, when we say uh, everywhere, we're practically everywhere. We got a few that we're getting there. We're inching to the other ones. But yeah. uh, Yeah. other than that, hit us up in the DMs. If you've got to make sense, if you don't think about it, uh, words of wisdom, go ahead and shoot us a message. Um, Let us know. We'll get that funny and stuff and that inspiration out to people. Want to shout out S and B Farms Distillery? Yes. Hit them up on Facebook. Go yep. visit them. Uh, buy their products. Damn um, good. Damn good products. Uh, that, that is not a stretch of the imagination. There yes. wasn't one that we disliked, was there? Besides the ninety three and the one one twenty three. One twenty three. Yeah. Was rough. I won't lie. But that's the way they're meant to be. Right. Yeah, they're they're, they're meant to be they're meant to be rough, rough and you could definitely tell. Um, also, merchandise is up uh, and going. So yes. if you'd like a shirt. Um, or a sticker for your car, yes. go ahead and DM us, and we'll get things moving along. Show us some support. Yeah, definitely. And I guess one more thing to add about SMB before we close out, it's not only a good product. Those are genuinely good people. Yeah. There's so much work they're doing to support veterans and the community and oh, things yeah. like Start, that, man. Started her up, started awesome. up her own, too, yeah. uh, to support the veterans. And uh, mm-hmm. The story in the front of that bottle was a legit story of her grandfather. So, Yeah. Yeah, if you got some time. Go take a tour of the facility in Bancroft, Iowa. Is awesome time. Yeah, you will not be disappointed. Absolutely. But hey, thanks again, everybody, for listening. This is I made Sports. something from nothing. No outside discussions. I've been writing. I love it.